Hey, we're here at Google I.O. 2018, and we just learned that you'll be able to download and install the Android P beta on your devices as of today. What's really interesting is that we got a chance to play with a build before even installing the beta on our own devices, and we've got a pretty good feel for some of how the really standout features work. The biggest change so far is how you're going to navigate with Android P. It's all gesture-based, a lot like what you'd see on the iPhone 10, but I don't think that's the fairest comparison to make because in a lot of ways, P's navigation gestures feel a lot more elegant and intuitive. Long story short, you swipe up to bring up your running apps, which appear as cards. Beneath that, you have app shortcuts and a Google search bar, which is, to me, always very, very useful. You can either swipe up again from there to bring up your full app launcher, or you can just do a slower swipe up from the bottom of the screen to invoke the launcher relatively normally. What's really neat about this is when you grab the new pill-shaped home button at the bottom of the screen and swipe back and forth, you'll be able to cycle through those open app cards, which is exciting to me because it feels a lot like my favorite OS of all time, WebOS, but also because it gives you an extra little bit of tactile feedback when you sort of thumb through those cards, which is a thing that doesn't exist on the iPhone 10, and it does go a long way in making those app cards feel more physical. You have more of a physical connection to this software. Beyond that, we also have what's called smart text selection, which is basically exactly what it says. If you've got a list with addresses and names of artists, you can hover over those names and have a contextual menu pop up that, in addition to the usual copy and paste, also offers options to show you a map of how to get to the location that you've just hovered over. Or if you're hovering over the name of an artist, like Taylor Swift, for example, you'll be able to look her up, but also play your music directly in Spotify. Those app connections are actually likely to change over time because how Google attempts to predict them is based solely off of your behavior. It really speaks to the level of AI that sort of runs under the surface of Google's devices going forward. It really does seek to make things infinitely more convenient for you. Whether or not that works the way they intend it to, or as well as we all hope it will, remains to be seen, but we'll find out fairly soon. We also got to play with Google's digital well-being dashboard. It's really interesting because Google has made it very clear here at I.O. 2018 that of the three major pillars of Android P, your well-being is actually one of them. So Google has a pretty strong interest in making sure you maintain a balance between the rest of your life and the stuff that happens on your phone because God knows we're more than willing to offer all of our time to these devices. The dashboard in particular gives you a bird's eye view of where you spend your time in your apps. Hopefully that information allows you to make better choices about how you spend your time, but ultimately that's a task that falls to you. Google can give you that transparency, but the choices that stem from them have to come from a personal place. At the same time, Google's move towards promoting your digital well-being feels almost paradoxical. It's like a head fake towards contrition because it sort of implies, and I think rightly so, that Google has built a platform that thrives on your engagement. We're going to dig into the Android P beta a little more once we can actually install them on our devices, but stay tuned for more on that and a whole lot more actually from Google I.O. 2018.